A new law has been passed to help ensure contact tracing data won't be misused. But not before Minister in Charge of the Smart Nation Initiative, Vivian Balakrishnan, told Parliament today that he took full responsibility for not stating earlier that data could be used in police investigations. It's also been revealed how public participation in the Trace Together program has been affected. During debate, nearly 20 MPs spoke on issues like trust and transparency. We acknowledge our error in not stating that data from Trace Together is not exempt from the Criminal Procedure Code. I take full responsibility for this mistake. And I deeply regret the consternation, the anxiety that was caused by my mistake. System. This admission came as a bill was passed to restrict the use of contact tracing data in criminal investigations. Dr. Balakrishnan stresses that Trace Together was always designed for contact tracing purposes, but he says it wouldn't be right to limit the police's ability to act in serious crimes and to deliberately not check contact tracing data and pursue all leads available. Doing that would be taking Singapore's safety and security for granted. This bill sets out what Minister Shanmugam and I said in Parliament last month. It represents a balance between two imperatives. Singaporeans want the protection of trace together. They know it saves lives. Singaporeans also understand and support the police continued access to such data for investigations or criminal proceedings in respect of serious offences to bring perpetrators of crime to justice and to protect public safety and security. The new law outlines seven types of serious crimes that the data can be used for. These include terrorism, murder and drug offences. And Dr Balakrishnan says this list cannot be amended without parliamentary approval. The government may not use the data for any purpose other than those mentioned regardless of any other written law requiring or allowing the disclosure of the data. Just in case I don't know what I don't know, this is added assurance. This trumps any other written law. This will give added reassurance that there are no further scenarios where public agencies may use the data apart from the purposes stated explicitly in this bill. The law also states that all contact tracing data must be deleted after the pandemic. That's on top of existing safeguards. For example, data collected is automatically purged after 25 days. Trace together tokens do not have cellular connectivity, nor do they collect location data. Workers' Party Chief Pritam Singh says he supports the bill as the exceptions significantly narrow down the instances where contact tracing data can be used. But he stresses that it's also critical to start an open conversation on privacy. Understandably, the conversation with electorates in these countries has not been easy. Many people perceive the world to be in an Orwellian age complete with fake news and the prospect of privacy intrusions by even private corporations. However, the absence of such a conver conversation in Singapore, combined with an erroneous assumption that continuing down tried and tested routes will suffice, would engender a worse outcome, even presaging a disunited population. We will all lose if that happens. Calling the government's response belated acknowledgement, he says that it has generated distrust among segments of the population. He adds that the deeper issue of transparency needs to be tackled before it jeopardizes contact tracing efforts. To counter skepticism and its resultant behaviors and to replace it with trust and cooperation, Singaporeans also need to better understand the necessity and ambit of data collection. This is especially so for a new generation who are more likely to be concerned about privacy and individual rights. The public must also be assured that the data collected and used for investigative purposes have safeguards that are robust enough with independent and external checks and balances, if necessary. 
In this regard, Mr Singh says the government should be forthcoming about what data it collects and the safeguards to prevent misuse of information. Next, he suggests studying how investigatory laws could be balanced with privacy concerns in light of new technologies. This could include appointing a neutral entity to monitor the use of such powers. Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan says that the tabling of this bill was a transparent acknowledgement of the mistake and a remedy for what happened. He said this after MPs voiced different opinions on how contact tracing data should be used by the police, if at all. This bill does not go far enough to assure our citizens that the government will keep its promises and is insufficient to restore public trust in the government during this pandemic. The Progress Singapore Party therefore stands opposed against this bill and calls upon the government to keep to its original promise by fully exempting contact tracing data from the CPC. The rules and the society that we've lived in has this presumption that the court has to have access to all available information. And of course, for information to get to the court, it must first be gathered. Is traced together something to be feared? Is it a huge invasion of your privacy? In my view, it is not. In my view, the fact that traced together can be used to solve crimes, you know, it may help exonerate innocent people. I mean, to me, that's you know, one more reason to, be, uh, to use it rather than to be afraid of using it. Dr. Balakrishnan said that his initial enthusiasm for the contact tracing technology had perhaps blindsided him. He adds that he didn't realise that the data could be used by the police under the Criminal Procedure Code, or CPC. Basically, what happened was at the end of October, I was asked, are you sure that the CPC doesn't apply, even for a murder case? A member of the public asked me, when I received that query, I asked my staff, please go and double check. I was informed that the CPC applied and that in fact the police had requested trace together data on one previous occasion. CNA understands that he was referring to a murder case in Pongal last May. Police did not obtain any data eventually, as the accused didn't have the Trace Together app. While police sergeants can generally retrieve data for investigations, the new law allows only inspectors or higher-ranked officers to obtain contact tracing data. Dr Balakrishnan says that this bill is also how the government is taking responsibility for what happened. Do the right thing rather than choosing the politically expedient option. You know I believe in transparency, even if transparency is awkward and politically costly. But it is better to be transparent than to double down on a mistake. It was also revealed that over the past month, 350 individuals have applied to delete their contact tracing data. In the same period, over 390,000 people started using Trace Together. Dr. Balakrishnan says that this shows public trust in the program and in the police.